Thank you, Ben. You may be seated. Take your Bibles and turn to Proverbs chapter 24. If we have children, children go on down the hallway to our class. Children head that direction. Psalms, Proverbs, excuse me, Proverbs chapter 24. The greatest wisdom, the deepest insight, the most intelligent reasoning is often heard from the voice you hear when you get quiet and get still. Just like our theme for this year, Connect says, Psalms 4610, be still and know that I'm God. Th think about that. Psalms 4610, be still and know that I am God. I, I will be honored among the nations. I will be honored throughout the world. Be still in God's presence. Why? Because in his presence, we hear from him. It's in his presence. Do you hear from him? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Life will be, or life is different, because we're listening to what God has to say. In Proverbs, we find him speaking, really, I find him speaking to me, and truth, giving us truth over and over again. In fact, here's the, the core of that wisdom, or the core of Proverbs in its key verse. Proverbs 1, verse number 7, says, fear the Lord. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge. You, you have these, Holden? Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, and fools despise wisdom and discipline. L lean into that. Fear the Lord, because it brings true knowledge. Lean in. We learn from God, lit literally, we learn what real wisdom is. We, we learn what is life-changing truth and what keeps us on the right path. I need this wisdom, do you? Do we hear or need the wisdom that will keep us in the world, but not of the world? To, to, to keep us from falling apart in a falling apart world? Have you noticed that there's terror all around us, it seems like? War has been seen, heard of. The epidemics of, of drug abuse, child abuse, power abuse, all kinds of things are rampant. And we need something to clear up the confusion, to stop the chaos, to, to keep us on a, on a journey that's right, not a journey that has pitfalls all through it. Because the pitfalls are real. That's where the wisdom of God shows up, shouts to us, and issues us guidance for everyday life. Here is wisdom. Remember what the Bible says in James 3.17 when it says of wisdom. Wisdom from above, that from heaven, is first of all pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, good fruit. Impartial and sincere. Here's the wisdom that's from above. This is what godly wisdom looks like, sounds like, and how it is applied to your life and mine. Notice how God continues to show up, not to dictate, but to lovingly direct your life and mine. Notice how God consoles us with compassion. He's not demanding from a heavy hand. He's like a, a godly father a loving parent who knows and loves and keeps showing up for their kids. Here is God. Proverbs chapter 24. Here, here is what God might say. Here is maybe what we need from an all-knowing, all-loving Father. Will you stand with me as we read God's Word together? Proverbs chapter 24, and uh, we're going to read some verses together. Proverbs chapter 24, beginning in verse number 1. Don't envy, here you go, evil people. Or don't desire their company, for their hearts plot violence and their words are always stirring up trouble. A house is built by wisdom, and it becomes strong through good sense. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with all sorts of precious, precious riches and valuables. The wise are mightier than the strong, and those with knowledge grow stronger and stronger. So don't go to war without wise guidance. Victory depends upon having many advisors. Wisdom is too lofty for fools. Among leaders at the city gates, they have nothing to say. A person who, who plans to do evil will get a reputation as a troublemaker. The schemes of a fool are sinful. Everyone de detests a mocker. If you fell under pressure, your strength really is too small. Rescue those who were unjustly sentenced to die. Save them as they stagger toward their death. Don't excuse yourself by saying, Look, we didn't know, for God understands all hearts. And he sees you. He who guards your soul knows you knew. 
and he will repay all the people, all of us, as their actions deserve. My child, eat honey, for it's good. The honey comes sweeter than taste. In the same way, wisdom is sweet to your soul. If you find it, you will have a bright future, and your hopes will not be cut off. Let's pray. Father, I come before you, we come before you today, and we just simply ask, Lord, speak to me. Maybe you need to say that to him. Lord, speak to me. Maybe, maybe you're at the place, and God, maybe there's some people here in this room or watching today that have never understood what it is to know Jesus. Like Savior Jesus, friend. Today, God, will you make that a special happening in someone's life? Whoever will call upon the name of the Lord, Jesus, will be saved. God, I pray that today through wisdom and through the power of the Holy Spirit who is working, that our lives would be changed, transformed, conformed to you. Now speak, Lord, please. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'm grateful for the book of Proverbs, and I want to challenge you, as I have many, many times throughout the last 20, 35, or whatever years, I've asked you to read Proverbs every day. Today is the 28th day of the month of January. Uh, a month has already gone. Wow. This is the 28th day of January. Read the 28th chapter of Proverbs. It is a great opportunity for us to speak or have spoken into our lives the wisdom of God. In fact, today's message is called, Wisdom Keeps Us. <laughs> There are some things that keep us and hold on to us, aren't there? Maybe it's that parent that you're afraid of. <laughs> because if you mess up, you're going to have to <clears throat> fess up. Maybe it's something else that's going on in your life and you just don't know where to go or how to go or what to say. Here we find God himself showing up in your life and my life to say, I'm going to keep you in the right way. I'm going to give you the words to say when nobody else will tell you what to say. Here is what God teaches us, tells us, and has for us. In this series that's called Begin With Wisdom, we've been told to seek wisdom and to heed its warnings. It went on to point us on the way of wisdom and to make a difference in our lives. Last week we talked about being reminded that wisdom calls out to us, literally shouts out to us. Friends, don't let it ride. Listen to righteousness. Don't let it pass you by. Stay on the path. Why? Because if you don't, you'll be wasting your time, wasting your life. Plan to do what God says and go his direction. Why? Because God comes to the rescue of his kids. Are you his kid? God comes to the rescue of us, his children. His guidance is powerful, promising, and it gives us purpose in life. When we understand that, there are some things that happen to you and I. And I'm going to give you five points today. Yeah, that means it's a long sermon. You hold on. In fact, it's, it's longer. Holding can tell you it's seven pages, and it's normally five. So listen up. Here we go. Number one, wisdom keeps our homes strong. I don't know about you. Do you need a strong home? We, we need a strong home because marriage can be tough. Anybody want to say Amen. Amen, y'all. <laughs> Marriage goes. Let, let me give you some thoughts. Wisdom keeps us keeps our homes strong. Proverbs 14, 26. Those who fear the Lord are secure. He will be a refuge for their children. Proverbs 3, 33. The Lord curses the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the upright. In verse number three, he says that a home is built by wisdom. I understand, maybe you understand this too. The more that we live without wisdom, or the more we live just by the seat of our pants with no planning and no saving, the more trouble we're going to get into. The more I go through life just doing whatever feels good, the more trouble that I'm going to end up in. The more I do it my way instead of God's way, the, the more that I, I listen to the wrong voices rather than his right voice, here's what happens. You and I end up in the wrong place. Here's why it says, stay away from evil. Don't desire their company because your heart will go to the wrong place and their words or even your words can stir up trouble. But hold on to good sense. There are some people that need some good sense. You know anybody like that, yeah. like that neighbor? Have you seen what they did? I tell you, they need to clean up their yard. We need to hold on to good sense. Why? Good sense makes us strong. You and I desperately need to show others what good sense is all about. Proverbs 9.1 says, Wisdom has built her house. She has carved it 
It's seven columns. Listen on, Proverbs 8, 14. Common sense and success belong to me, talking about wisdom. Insight and strength are mine. We need the wisdom of God because that's how we build good homes. Listen to this. It's also how we apply knowledge. I don't know about you, but my knowledge is ending. I don't know everything. Have you told your teenager lately that they don't know everything? They'll figure it out. Okay, It's going to happen. In fact, the older I get, the less and less that I do know. <laughs> what, what is it? Um, if you want people to know that you know nothing, keep talking. Or how about this? When you open your mouth, you remove all doubt. <laughs> we, we have a God who wants to give us wisdom, and we need to be like H&R Block, those that are old enough to know that commercial. <laughs> when they speak, we listen. How, how about this? How about when God speaks... God's people ought to listen. So who are you listening to? What, what voices are, are the loudest voices? What voices are the most predominant voices in, in your life? Some of you are listening to a lot of voices. You need to go see a doctor, okay? That's need some medicine for that. When we understand that our houses and our homes and our families are being built by the wisdom of God, we know that knowledge is applied, and we begin to value what God values instead of what the world values. When we value what the world values, listen, we become a hoarder of worldly things, not godly things. We become, we, we become a user of people rather than a server of people. We need to have strong homes. Wisdom keeps our homes strong. Here you go. Here's another one. Wisdom keeps us listening. You want to know why? Because when we think we know the right way, when we think everything is fine just my way, we're going to cover our ears, we're going to cover our eyes, we're going to do whatever we want. We're, we're going to get on our path, not anybody else's path. And we desperately need to keep on listening. Listen to this, Proverbs 16, 20. Those who listen to instruction will prosper. Those who trust the Lord will be joyful. Proverbs 15, 28. The heart of the godly thinks carefully before speaking. The mouth of the wicked overflows with evil words. There's a test for you. Righteous or wicked? What kind of words come out your mouth? We desperately need to understand that wise people are mightier than strong people. You might be able to knock me out, but you know what? If I can stand strong and avoid your, the blows, here's what happens. I'm going to be stronger. In fact, the book of Proverbs teaches us that all the time. You need to have good advice. Not only that, you, you need to be ready for whatever battles before you. And you know what? The strongest army is not always the one with the best and the brightest engineering. It is one with the best and the brightest minds who are thinking about what's next. You and I need to plan for the future, and if we don't plan for the future, we're going to plan to fail. We need to hear the voice of God. Wisdom keeps our ears open. Listen to Ecclesiastes 9, 15, and 16. A poor, wise man knew how to save the town, so it was rescued. But afterward, no one thought to thank him. So even though wisdom is better than strength, those who are wise will be despised if they are poor. What they say will not be appreciated for long. You know, the wisest people in your life may not be the banker, may not be the professor, may not be the business owner. It may be that little lady down the street who learned how to pray a long time ago. Or, or, or maybe it's that kid, you know, that little irritating, irritating, annoying kid that's always pulling at you. It may be that kid that's hearing the voice of God more than you. We need to be listening to what God has to say. Why? Because wisdom gives us more strength. Why? Because wisdom gives us the knowledge that we need for life. And here it says we need wise guidance. Don't go to war without wise advisors. Listen to Luke 14, 31 and 32. For what king would go to war against another king without first sitting down with his counselors to discuss whether the army of 10,000 could defeat the 20,000 soldiers marching against him. And if he can't, he will send a delegation to discuss terms of peace while the enemy is still far off. By the way, we need to plan. you either going to plan to win or you're going to plan to lose. Oh, uh, Nobody plans to lose. Sometimes we do because we're listening to the wrong voices. Victory is certain when there are advisors. Number three, wisdom keeps us. This is my favorite point of today's sermon. Wisdom keeps us from being stupid. Do you ever want to look at a friend or a family member and say, you're being stupid? I'm not supposed to use that word, am I? It's a new generation. Here I go. We need to stop being stupid, y'all. 
Let me tell you, when you go to, to check the box for that person you're voting for, don't be stupid. Listen, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, but I'm going to tell you this. If that person doesn't stand up for what's right and what's full of character and integrity, you shouldn't be voting for them. Let me go a little further. That relationship that you're in, if they're, <clears throat> if they're telling you to sleep with them before they marry you and put a ring on your finger, that's stupid because the Scripture says sex is saved for marriage. Let me tell you just a little bit more here. If you're hearing that voice about buying, I'm talking to myself, about buying all that stuff and you don't have savings and you don't have the ability to buy it, you're going to go into debt. That's stupid. We need to understand that the voice of wisdom is going to keep us from all kinds of trouble. So stop being stupid. Okay, good. There we go. Proverbs 4, 27. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. Proverbs 16, 17. The path of a virtuous leads away from evil. Whoever follows that path is safe. We need to understand that God wants to keep us on the right path, doing the right things, not the stupid things. Some people just don't get it. <laughs> Have you met him? Heck, I work with him. Oh, ooh, I got to be careful. Cindy, that was not about you, okay? Nor you, nor you. Boy, I'm just... <laughs> Close closet ladies aren't here. I can't. They're not watching. I'm in trouble. I'm sorry. <laughs> Some of the people around us just don't get it. Do you know why? Because they have treasured the things that are not of God. What does it say? Look, look, look here. Verse number 7. Wisdom is too lofty for fools. Among the leaders at the city gates, they have nothing to say. Why? Because they hang around with people that think low thoughts or little thoughts, or maybe they just think little. You and I need to start thinking. I'm not talking about overthinking. Some of y'all do that really well. Yeah, I'm sure you, darling. <laughs> Decide. Move on. But do it after you've counseled with some people and with some scripture and, and with God. Why? Because God's going to say some things going to lead us in the right direction and keep us from being stupid. 1 Corinthians 2.14. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's spirit. If all sounds foolish, it all sounds foolish to them and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit, the spirit means. I, I don't know where you are and what's going on in your life today, but if you've unplugged from the Spirit of God, if you've unplugged from the voice of God, you need to plug back in because God wants to give you some truth. He wants to give you some understanding. He wants to give you the most valuable things in the world. And by the way, the most valuable thing in all the world is not what you're going to put in the bank. It's what you're going to put in your heart, and His name is Jesus. Today, I want to remind you the most important influence ought to be in your homes and your families is Jesus himself. If we're not making time for the word of God and the person of God, we're going to make time for the wrong people who are desperately not God. Today, we need to understand that our voices ought to be speaking for the right people, but some people just don't get it, and some people are just tr troublemakers. Stay away from them. Verse number 8, it says that. That's what these people call themselves. That's what their reputation is. It's where they go. They are scheming, and their scheming is leading to more sin. And sin is going to find you out, and sin is going to take you places and keep you in places and in things that you don't want to stay in. Why? Because it's going to hurt, and the consequences of it are real. Listen, Romans 7, 5. When we were controlled by our old nature, sinful desires were at work within us, and the law aroused these evil desires that produced a harvest of sinful deeds resulting in death. One verse down, Proverbs 7, 7. Excuse me, Romans 7, 7. Well then, Am I suggesting that the law of God is sinful? Of course not. In fact, it was the law that showed me my sin. I would have never thought that coveting is wrong if the law had not said you shall not covet. So, I'll give you an illustration. Y'all listen and say amen? Okay, here's the deal. This is a Bible, and the Bible is good. Best-selling book of all time. Why? Because within it, it holds the words of God. And by the way, John chapter 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. In verse number 14, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and the Word's name is Jesus. We need the Word of God. But we also need the wisdom of God. Because the wisdom of God keeps us on the straight and narrow, going the right direction. And, and, and when God says, maybe it's in the Ten Commandments, or, or, or maybe it's in some other place where you've read 
And it's like, I shouldn't go that direction, or I shouldn't say those words, or I shouldn't have that relationship, or I shouldn't do that thing. When we understand those things, do you know what happens? We begin to look like and act like the person that we love the most, and hopefully that's Jesus. In fact, the scripture says in Romans chapter 8, we ought to be conformed to his image. Conformed to his image. And, And too many people are moving to be mockers or are moving toward closer to sin. Some have certain, certain failure. Verse number 10 says, If you fail under pressure, your strength is too small. How do you get better strength? We'll begin to exercise what's real strength, and that is the wisdom of God. So let's move on. Point number four, wisdom keeps us close to God and close to his ways. I don't know about you, but whoever you're close to and spending time with, you're going to become like. Whoever you're, hmm, I'm not going to give in. I won't do what they do. I won't go where they go. We'll keep spending time around them. You'll end up in the same place they are, right? Scripture says whoever rolls a stone will probably roll it on them. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it. You know what? I want to come to your house if you're baking brownies. You know why? Because I'm going to eat a brownie. I, I... I don't want to come to the house if you've got plumbing problems. You don't want me to fix your plumbing problems. My Sunday school teacher, um, well, I worked for him for a little while, and he needed a new... um, Thank you very much, Tammy. That's the, how you knew that. He needed a new faucet. And he's like, oh, will you put a new fa- I'll put a new faucet in. I put a new faucet in. You know what? Their kitchen was now a swimming pool. <laughs> you don't want me to, to do that. There's some other people here that cast them, somebody, Michael, some, somebody. Y'all can be wise. You need your car worked on? Larry Norman right over there. He's got Larry or Chris. Some one of those boys, Jonathan. Why? Because don't. If you've got a heart problem, you probably should go to a heart doctor. Cast and praise God. He had a heart cath this week and everything's fine. They found a heart, y'all. <laughs> and he's got a big one. And I appreciate the fact that the Adams have a big, a big heart. And you guys are awesome. And, and praise God for that. That the, the test came out. Whoever you spend time with, whoever you listen to, is going to keep you close in their direction. If you're married, should you go home every now and then? Yeah. And it's kind of important. It's a relationship. You've got to work on it. Does your car, if you're driving down the road, unless you've got an electric car, does your car need gas? Yeah. Some of your cars need a lot of gas. You've got a gas guzzler, right? Some of us don't. I, yeah. We've got to have the things that fill us up or it's going to leave us on the side of the road. Have you ever been left on the side of the road spiritually? Spiritually. Yet we listen to the wrong person. Praise God, he has a desire for us to keep us in the right way. Proverbs 1.3 says, Their purpose is to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives, to help them to do what is right, just, and fair. Proverbs 21, verse number 3, The Lord is more pleased when we do what is right than when we offer him sacrifices. By the way, we would like for you to give here at the Community Fellowship to do what's right, tithe. We want you to do that. But you know what? I want you to live for Jesus before anything else. Amen. Why? Because living for Jesus will lead you in the right direction, and then you'll want to give. <laughs> Why? Because verse number 11, I, I think this is a really important verse. It says, rescue those. This sounds like a prayer, but it's a really a, a truth of God. It says, rescue those who are unjustly sentenced to die. Save them as they stagger to death. Do you know what we ought to be doing? We ought to be saying to others, I've been there. That thing I did, that thing you're doing, it leads in the wrong direction. Please don't go there. Why did our parents tell us to cross, when you cross the street, look both ways? Because they've been there, right? Why, why did they tell us to not go into debt? Why, why did they tell us to not date that person? Why, why, did, why did the boss tell us to do it this way and not that way? Maybe because they have been there before. Whoever you are close to and you listen to, you're going to become like. You and I have an opportunity because of the experience and the testimony we have to tell others, you don't have to go down that road. Some people got to learn on their own, right? <laughs> they just don't get it. Stop being stupid. That's what you preacher said. Wis- Wisdom keeps us from being stupid, so be wise. But what does it say? Why why do we want to stay close to Jesus? So that we can help others see his truth. I I woke up this morning with a song. I posted it on Facebook and on on social media. 
And um, it, it, it talks about get up out of that grave. Get up out of that grave. I'm forgiven. And, and then it says in there, it says, what he did for me, he'll do for you. What he did for me, he'll do. Do you believe that God will do again what he did in the past? Okay, you know what he's done for others? He saved us. You know what he'll do for somebody else? He'll save them. Do you know what he did for somebody? He healed them. Do you know what he'll do for others? He'll heal them. Do you know what? He'll take you from that place where you're addicted and in shame and sin, and he'll take you to a place where you've been out of addiction, praise God, and he'll take you to a new place. Why? Because when we get close to God, listening to his wisdom, our lives will be different. You remember what Jesus said? In the world, but not of the world. You ain't supposed to be soiled by the world, but we need to be seasoning the world with what Jesus has to say. Y'all okay? Proverbs 14, 25, the truthful witness saves lives, but a false witness is a traitor. Are you being led by a deceiver or by a redeemer? When we understand God and we stay close to him, he's going to fill our souls with what matters. He's going to fill our souls with what matters. We went to that. Uh, raceway meeting this weekend. It was down in Kannapolis, right above Charlotte. And I praise God. Yesterday morning, I, I opened up, you know, we went to one of them hotels that has the meal, and it wasn't one of the, it was a good meal. Okay, it wasn't, okay. I opened it up, and I saw gravy, and the inside of me just said, hallelujah. I just love gravy. It's just one of those things. I, I could eat gravy like soup. Anybody else, amen? Sausage gravy. Oh, praise the Lord. I, I'd put it on donuts if I could. No, okay. Uh, What's my point? <laughs> what fills your soul? What fills your soul? What you're longing and what you want tells me what, what you're filling your soul with. Do, do you want peace or chaos? Some of y'all are really good at more chaos. There's one of you here that says that I love drama. Fooey on you. <laughs> Why? Because drama is not going to get me to the place where I have the peace of God. I, I've, I'm, I'm learning something. Y'all hang with me here for a second. I'm learning that the more time I spend in quietness with Jesus, the easier it is to hear the voice of Jesus. I'm learning that the more time I spend in noise and with noise and turning up the noise and around the difficulties of life, the more I get busy, 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 and I stay busy, y'all. You know what? The more busy, busy, busy I am, the less I hear God. Amen. I do have two ears, and I need to be listening. What is filling our souls, verse number 12, what is filling our souls? Listen, we don't have an excuse. God wants to fill our souls. He wants to fuel us, and he's given us his word, his love letter. Literally, God understands us. He knows us, and as we listen to him, he will guard us, and he'll fill our souls, and his wisdom is sweet to our souls, the scripture says here. that There are still consequences for our actions. Go the wrong way, and you're going to get hurt. Go the right way, and you're going to get helped. 2 Timothy 2, 25, 26. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change their hearts, these people's hearts, and they will learn the truth. Then they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap, for they have been held captive by him to do what he wants. Whatever you're listening to, you're going to come closer to. But here's the deal. These people who are coming close to God and listening to God, look at verse number 14. In the same way, wisdom is sweet to your soul. If you find it, wisdom. If you find wisdom, you will have a bright future and your hopes will not be cut off. That's good. Because sometimes our hope gets cut off. And what are you hoping for? I hope he'll quit preaching. <laughs> I hope my relationship will work. What are you hoping for? You know what? Whatever you hope for, hopefully it's filling your soul rather than just getting you by to the next morsel. How is it that you can go 21 days or it, like Jesus did, 40 days without eating? How, how do you do that? That's difficult. You know what? Some of us need to do that. Push back, do some of that. But here's the deal. Whatever we're filling our soul with either fuels us or empties us. What is bringing you? Is are the things in your life bringing you closer to God or, or getting you further away from Him? Psalms 1911. They are warning to your servant, talking about the words of God and wisdom in the Scripture. They are warning to your servant and a great reward to those that obey them. 
Why? Because wisdom protects us and warns us. Why? He says in verse number 15 and 16, he says, don't be ambushed. Don't get robbed. Don't plan to ambush and don't rob others. Why? Because the godly will get up. Even when they fall down, they'll get up. You know what happens to those that are wicked? They fall down and they can't get up. Psalms 34, 19, the righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to the rescue them each time. Have you ever messed up? Do you know who comes to your rescue when you're his kid? Jesus. Cats have nine lives. Praise God, I got more than that. <laughs> you know why? Because I'm a screw up, I'm a mess up, I do things I shouldn't do, I say things I shouldn't say, and praise God for his grace and his mercy. And by the way, some of you have been his grace and his mercy. Because you've told me that I'm <laughs> stupid sometimes. More so Julie than anybody else, but some of y'all said that before. Um, how do we see people? When you look at people, how do you see them? When Jesus looks at people, he doesn't see what they can do for him. He sees what he can do for them. Did I say that right? When Jesus looks at people, he doesn't say, how can I use you for my kingdom? He says, how can my kingdom influence you? You know why? Because when we're influenced by him, we will influence others for him. And our souls will get full. Psalms 58.10, the godly will rejoice when they see injustice avenged and they will wash their feet in the blood of the wicked. Why is that? Because we don't need to worry about the, verse 19, we don't need to worry about the evildoers. They have no future, but we got a future, y'all. Psalms 37.7, be still in the presence of the Lord. Wait patiently for him to act. Why? Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about, the, um, about their schemes. Look on a little further, verses 37 and 38 of that same passage. Look at those who are honest and good, for a wonderful future awaits them. Those who love peace, but the rebellious will be destroyed. They have no future. Praise God, we have a future with Jesus. Praise God, we have a future from Jesus. And in, in verse number 21, this is further than I, I read to you, but I want to give you just a little bit more. He says, my child, fear the Lord and the King. Don't associate with rebels. Fear the king. What, what does it mean to fear God? We, we've had some great conversations through the book of Proverbs about that. And, and, and we've, my, Michael and I, you and I talked about fearing God. Too many people are out there scared of God because if they don't do it right, he's going to hurt them. Let me tell you this. We don't have a God that's ready to whoop you. We have a God who's ready to help you. We, we don't have a God that's ready, ready not to zap you dead. We got a God that's ready to uh, give you life. We have a God who loves us so much that when we fall, he's ready to pick us up. You know what? His grace is sufficient for my stupidity. That's not exactly how Paul said it, but it's how he meant it. Fearing God reminds us to honor authority. Fearing God reminds us to stay away from the rebels. Go Ravens. Go Lions. Anybody else want to get offended today? Disaster is ahead of those who don't fear God. I don't know about you, but it's time for us to learn some wisdom. Today, I've, I've given you five, five things, and I'm going to go back and just go over them real quick. Wisdom keeps our home strong. Wisdom keeps us listening. Wisdom keeps us from being stupid. Wisdom keeps us close to God in His ways. And finally, wisdom keeps us on the right path. On the right path. Take out your phone and you put on the, the GPS app, right? And, and have you ever had this happen? You put in the address and then it says it can't find it. Or, or you don't have any cell service. What am I going to do? There's some of us who are walking through life and we don't know where to go, right or left. We don't know who to listen to because we're constantly being pulled in one way or another. God is not calling us 
to live in chaos and be distracted. He's calling us to be comforted by his compassion and to be led in his righteousness. And the only way to get it is to lean into God. Some thoughts. All of these come from Proverbs. Proverbs 15, 9 says, The Lord detests the way of the wicked, but he loves those who pursue godliness. So let me give you just, just a couple of things to think about. This is from the last part of chapter 24, Proverbs. Be fair. You want to be treated well? Be fair to others. Don't play favorites. Verse 23. Be honest. Verse 24. Don't, don't cover up wickedness. In fact, if you cover up wickedness, it's going to find you out. There's blessings ahead for the honest. Um, an honest answer is like a kiss from a friend. And I'm not talking about one of them sweet, weird kisses. I'm talking about a blessing. Be good to your neighbor. Don't lie about your neighbor. So be fair. Be honest. How about this? Be wise. Be wise. A wise planner. Don't waste your time. Look at your field. Maybe you're a farmer. Make sure... The scripture says in verse number 30, I went by the field of a lazy man and it was all torn up with thistles and thorns and weeds. You can tell somebody who doesn't take care of their yard, right? You can tell somebody who doesn't take care of their life. You can tell somebody who doesn't care because they're going to be unkind, flippant with their words. Be fair, be honest, be wise. Be rich, be rich in the right stuff. Hey, I, I'm so glad you're visiting today. I'm not a um, prosperity preacher. If you follow Jesus, he's not going to give you a million dollars. But by the way, if he gives you a million dollars, remember to tithe. That'd be a hundred thousand, and I'm looking for that. Um, but be rich in what matters. Do you know what really matters? Love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness. Start a new series next week on 1 Corinthians 13. And the greatest of these, 1 Corinthians 13, is love. Why? Because love points us to the one that loved us most, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I need to begin my days with wisdom. And I challenge you, stop being stupid. <laughs> Get close to Jesus, because he will radically change your life. Will it cost you anything? That GPS, have you ever noticed that you're on a, going on a long trip? It asks you if you want to have a route with tolls or without tolls. The easy route is not the one without tolls. It's the one with tolls. There's a price to pay when you follow Jesus. You've got to deny yourself and follow him. You've got to stop the sin and start following the Savior. Begin with wisdom. The fear of the Lord. Not to fear him like I'm scared. But to fear him like, oh my, Jesus did this for me. By the way, he'll do it for you. Father God, we come before you here at the end of this service. And just simply ask that you would do more. In our lives, through our lives. For our lives than we've ever seen before. Jesus, I need you. We, we need you. So God, I, I pray that you change us so that we'll become wise. Will you stand with me? Heads bowed, eyes closed. I'm... Father, we pray that you change us. But I know that without your wisdom, without listening to you, I'm not going to be any different. So Lord, I need you. I just confess it out loud. I just confess it out loud. Lord, I, I need you. God, I pray that we would get up out of the mud and let you take care of us. God, I, God, I pray that we would walk away from that sin that's just tearing us up. God, I pray that you give us the, the wisdom to walk away from that relationship or that, that situation that's always taken us in the wrong direction. So God, give me a heart for you. 
Change me, Lord. And God, I just confess I need you. So today, I want to walk with you, Jesus. I want to walk with Jesus. Wisdom keeps us walking with Jesus. Walking with Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In your name. Look right here. We're going to sing together. The band's going to lead us in a song. Rescue. But will you come and do business with Jesus? So we have this step down here. And if you would like to come and spend some time praying. That's where Julie and I are going to start at this point. We ask you to come and join us. Not, not, not for anything other than you focus on the one that matters most. His name is Jesus. If you need to accept him today, I'd love to tell you about Jesus. And some others would love to talk to you about him. If you want someone to pray with you, we'll do that as well. Whatever it is that God's put on your heart, come walk with Jesus.